Hi, I'm Jennifer, and today I'm going to show you how to make the photo snowflake ornament. Now here is an example of it, uh, stitched up with a little bit larger than what it calls for in the project yarn. But it's in a nice bright green so you can see the stitches. I am going to use this chunky yarn so you can see what I'm doing easier. So first, according to the instructions on my website, CelticNotCrochet.com, you're going to chain 30, making sure you keep the chain untwisted. Going to insert your hook into the first chain you made and do a slip stitch. Yarn over and pull through everything. That's a nice invisible joining stitch. Then you're going to chain one and then you're going to work 36 single crochets right inside this ring. Put your hook into the ring, yarn over, pull through. Now you have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. And it gives a nice clean edge around the inside of the ring. You continue that until you have 36. Now that I've done 36 single crochets all the way around, I find the first one, which is right here, insert my hook, yarn over, and pull through everything, which is a slip stitch, to join it all together. We can cover this up later, slide it over. So the next step, I'm going to chain one and single crochet in that same stitch that I did the slip stitch. And now I'm going to make a bunch of loops or spaces by chaining five. Then I'm going to skip two and single crochet in the next one. I'm going to do that all the way around. Chain five, three, four, five. Skip two and single crochet in the next one. And I continue that all the way around. So I have several of these chain five loops that I'm going to start working into. So here I've gone all the way around and I'm going to have 12 chain five spaces. Here's my last one, three, four, five. As you can see, I skipped two. This right here is the chain one from the beginning. And then I slip stitch right into that first single crochet. And now I have the spaces all the way around. The next thing I'm going to do for round three is I'm going to slip stitch into that first chain five space. I'm going to chain three to give me the height I need. And then I'm going to do two double crochets. Double crochet yarn over, put your hook in, yarn over, pull through. Now you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now I have a chain three and two double crochets. This chain three counts as a double crochet, so as if I have three there. Then I'm going to chain three, and I'm going to go back into the same space that I've been working in and do three more double crochets. Yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and again. And what this is often called is a shell. You have three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. Sometimes if you only have two double crochets, it's sometimes called a V-stitch. And I'm going to repeat that all the way around in each chain five space. Three double crochets. Chain three. And three double crochets again. And 
and continue all the way around so you have 12 sets of these shells. Okay, so now when you've gone all the way around, finishing all the shells in each of the spaces, you're going to want to join with the first shell right here in that beginning chain three. And you're just going to put your hook in, yarn over, pull through the chain three, and pull through the loop on your hook. And that's a slip stitch to join. And then you're going to work a slip stitch in each of the next two stitches because we want to get to the next chain three space. So we're just moving along and then we're going to put a slip stitch right inside that chain three space. And now we're ready to start the last round. Now what you might, might want to do before you do this round is you might want to go around and with a stitch marker or even a large safety pin, that would work like this and put a stitch marker in each of those chain three spaces so you don't start working in the wrong place. Because as you can see, here's one shell with the chain three in the middle. Here's another shell with the chain three right here. But this is a space that you could work into, but for this pattern you don't want to. So to prevent some headache, you can put a stitch marker and take the extra minute to mark all of those chain three spaces and then when you're ready to work in this last round you know exactly where you're going and you won't have to rip out your work for going in the wrong space. Thanks to Bonnie from my crochet class for coming up with that tip as we made these in our crochet class last month. She had that idea and her snowflake turned out great. So here we go. You're going to do a beginning shell, so it's the same as the last round. Chain three, two double crochets in the same space. And then you're going to chain three. And do three more double crochets in that same space. And now you have a beginning shell right there. The next chain three space, we are going to make those fancy spokes of the snowflake. So I'm going to remove my marker, remember where I'm going to go, and I'm going to do a double crochet. Then I'm going to chain eight. Then I'm going to do a treble crochet in that same space. So I yarn over twice, put my hook in, yarn over, pull through the space. Now I have four loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now I have a double crochet with a chain eight and then a tall treble. Now I'm going to chain ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to do another treble crochet in the same place. Yarn over twice, put my hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop, four loops on hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're almost finished with the fancy spoke of the snowflake. We have to do eight more chains, five, six, seven, eight, and one more double crochet right in that same space. We can slide these over if we need some more room. And now our fancy spoke is complete. So you can see the chain eight, the chain 10, and the other chain eight with the double crochet, two trebles, and the double crochet. And now we're just going to alternate that with one of the regular shells that you did in the row before, the round before. 
So my next chain three space, I'm going to do three double crochets and then chain three and then three double crochets again. And I'll just continue that all the way around. So once you've gone all the way around and done a shell and then the fancy spoke alternate all the way around, you've completed the snowflake. You want to weave in your ends and then you're going to stiffen it so that you have, you can see here's the one not stiffened and then here's the finished project and all these nice points of the snowflake are stiff and it holds its shape and looks great on the tree. I use this stiffener right here, Crafter's Pick Fabric Stiffener. I found it at Hobby Lobby. Very affordable, only four dollars and this has lasted me a long time for several projects. And I love how it has this tip like any glue Elmer's glue has where you can unscrew the top and just work right from the bottle. You don't have to waste any by putting it out in a bowl. So I open it up, get a small piece of cardboard and just from the recycle bin and then a piece of aluminum foil and you'll need some rust proof pins. I like these T-pins. They're nice and strong. And then I'm going to turn this over onto the back or the wrong side and some people aren't sure which is which if you look around the center this is the side that faced you the whole time that you worked on the project so you can always put some kind of stitch marker so you don't forget but also if you look at the single crochets they're nice and smooth on this side and there you can see the braided top if I turn it over see how much more bumpy the single crochets are and you can see that crossbar bump here so this is the back and that's what I would like facing me as I stiffen now you do have the option of soaking the whole thing with the stiffener squeezing it and working it through but I like to only work on the back because this yarn has a really pretty shimmer there's a metallic pearl like thread in it. I don't know if you can see that on the video and it makes it really pretty and look like a real snowflake. So I don't want to lose that by adding stiffener to the front and a lot of that will go away if the stiffener is coated on the front. So I'm just going to put it on the back and I start at the back like this with the tip of the bottle and go around the center and once I've done a small section Take my finger and press it in. After I've done that section, then I do each shell around and just tap it on, do a few, press it in to help it get absorbed by the fibers. And I continue throughout the whole thing just like that. When I get to the chain spokes, carefully follow along those in the same way. Making sure that each thing gets coated. Press those in as well. Once everything is covered with the stiffener on the back side, then I'm going to take the pins and pin the spokes in the shapes that I want. And because one is longer than the other, it lends itself to that kind of look. Now as I look at this, I can see it's a little crooked, so I can move it over so they're even. And then what you want to do, the best way to do this, is once you've done this one, Go all the way across to the opposite side and work on that one. And by working opposites to opposites, you will get a nice even shape to your snowflake. 
and that helps to pull it tight evenly. Now I see that the circle is not exactly a circle, so I'm going to add some pins so it makes it into a nice circle. And I'll just keep working all the way around, pinning the spokes, pinning even right here, the chain three spaces in the shells, and do that all the way around, and then let it dry overnight in a nice, warm, dry place. And then the next day, I will come back and do it again. Do another layer on everything. Even though it's slightly stiff, it won't be stiff enough to hold its shape well because we're only putting it on the back. But you'll see it'd be well worth it. And then after you've done it a second time, let it dry completely. Take all the pins out. Add a ribbon tie to one of the spokes. Pick this ribbon with, that looks like a pearlescent snowflake. I used the center as a template traced on a piece of paper so I could print out this photo of my little doggy. And then I put a piece of transparency plastic. You can see, probably see that a little bit there. That's just to protect the photo. You could put some clear contact paper over it. And I just hot glued it on the back. And then what would be a nice finishing touch is to take a piece of cardstock and write a message. Or Christmas 2018. Or to mom, love Jennifer 2018. And then you have a nice handmade Christmas ornament that's been personalized with a photo of your choice. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great tutorials.